Hi, today we're gonna learn how to use the Pilates ring for a full body beginner's workout. Hi, welcome to Wealthy Boss. My name is Mariah. Every week I bring you free bar, yoga, and Pilates workouts online. So if you're into that kind of thing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today we're gonna work our entire body utilizing just a mat and our Pilates ring. And this workout is brought to you by my meal planning mastery, which you'll hear more about at the end. Now let's get to work. We're gonna start on our mat in a high kneeling position. Now you can always double up your mat or throw a blanket underneath if this bothers your knees at all. That ring is gonna come between our hands. We're gonna leave the fingertips open rather than death clenching it, okay? And we're starting with our breath activation. So I'd like you to take your arms up, reach them tip your fingers up to the sky, and then see if you can shrug your shoulders up around your ears on the inhale. On the exhale, blow out through your lips and try to pull your shoulders as far away from your earlobes as possible while giving that ring a little extra squeeze. So on an inhale, we slightly lessen our grip on that circle, reaching those shoulders way up towards the sky. On the exhale, purse lips like we're blowing out a birthday candle as we create more distance between our earlobes and the tops of our shoulders. Let's do a few more rounds just like that, this time focusing on what's going on in the rib cage as you take that inhale. We want it to open up nice and wide on the inhale and exhale, we feel those ribs drawing back in as the belly button starts to pull in a little bit closer towards the spine more just like that don't be afraid to make that breath nice and audible the breath is so important in Pilates so we take it in through the nose and out through the mouth we really feel the belly working with that exhale perfect from here we're gonna relax the shoulders back down but give me a little pulses of squeezing that ring in towards each other it's like you could take it all the way into an oval and we're matching that with an exhale. So it's a little staccato exhale with every squeeze like this. Really feeling those shoulders light up, feeling your lats light up, but let's create as much space as possible between the shoulder caps and earlobes for four, three, two, and one. Lowering that ring. Right in front of the chest, we're gonna bend the elbows wide, so we wanna have them as wide as the shoulders. And then on the exhale, we're pressing back with the upper body, but sending that ring forward. Pull it back up for that thigh stretch. Now we're only going as far back as our knees are okay with. This is a powerful quad exercise. If you haven't done this one on a regular basis, I bet you're gonna feel the fronts of your thighs tomorrow and the next day. So we don't need to go further back than our knees are comfortable with, but we do wanna get just a little bit of activation in those thighs or maybe a lot of activation. And we're just steadily pressing into that ring. So upper body is kind of getting some work the whole time as we extend that out. Remember, we don't need to death grip on that Pilates ring. It's not going anywhere. We're squeezing hard enough that it is going to stay between our hands. I suggest those long fingers. How are those thighs feeling? Woo, golly. So this is a total body workout. We wanna make sure we're feeling the lower body as well as our core and upper body today. How about two more? This feels so good to work our bodies. Last one, fantastic. From here, we're actually going to come all the way up into a standing position. We're gonna get a little combination action going here. So listen carefully. We're gonna take that ring right in front of us, keeping arms long, giving a little steady pressure into that ring the whole time. Now I'm gonna have you step back with your right foot into a lunge as you rotate towards the left knee. So we're rotating towards the forward knee. Could you step back together at the top of your mat? Give me a little chest press, just like we did with that thigh stretch, and then take it up overhead, take it back down. All right, let's do that again. Other side, so stepping back with your left foot, rotating towards your right knee. Take it back up to center, reach it out. 
and in, take it back out, it's up. Give me an extra little squeeze as those fingertips go up towards the sky and let's take it again. So remember, we're stepping back, but we're rotating towards the front foot. So it kind of challenges our brain a little bit with this rotation, which is also good to work the muscle between your ears, known as your brain. And you take your time with this one. We're not in a race. In fact, slower is like 99.9% .9 of the time better in Pilates. That, we're, that means that the muscle fibers are actually gonna be under contraction for longer. It also increases the likelihood that we're gonna get the form right, which is, of course, always gonna give us more benefit from the work. You got it. Let's do two more on each side. Nice and slow. Remember, we're adding that chest press. A little overhead lift, and once those fingertips stretch up, it's an extra little squeeze, but let's relax the shoulders away from the earlobes. Last time, other side. Fantastic. So from here, we can go ahead and relax that ring down for just a second, rolling those shoulders out. We're gonna come into some sumo squats, so that means toes are facing forward, so feet are parallel, but it's a little bit wider than a normal squat, so maybe even like almost mat width distance. And we're gonna extend that, those arms overhead, and it's a little tricep kickback, so we squeeze that ring together and drop it down and up, and down, and up. So there are a couple things going on here. We wanna make sure that we are sending our bottoms a little bit further back behind us, almost so much so that you feel like you would be on the little edge of <laughs> falling down onto your booty. That means that we're gonna be working the booty and the quads like we want to and the hamstrings as opposed to putting pressure on the knees. We wanna make sure always from this point out that the shoulders are pulling down away from the earlobes. And then of course it is steady pressure into that ring, but you're probably gonna feel it a little bit um, differently as you lower the ring versus when you lift it up. So we're getting into the triceps, the shoulders are getting a little work as well. We're gonna do two more before we take a little standing break. It's not really a break, but the legs get a break to stand. <laughs> Perfect. So from here, the arms come out long. Remember, nice long fingers for me, no death grip. And then we're just gonna squeeze that ring as hard as we can with the, that explosive out breath. <laughs> so every time you're squeezing is when you're taking that nice staccato exhale, really feeling the belly pulling in, almost like you're coughing or sneezing, kind of the way your belly kind of pulls in. We're actually getting some standing core work in as we do this, and of course that chest is getting a workout here as well. Let's do four more. And then it's right back into another set of those squats with the tricep kickbacks. Now watch out if your shoulders are starting to sneak up around your ears. If they're on the tighter side, that can sometimes be more of an issue. And pretty much all of us these days have tight shoulders. I know I tend to. So just being aware of sending them down as far as they'll go today. Maybe sinking a little deeper into your squats if your knees are okay. You always gotta honor those joints. This is a short workout today, so we wanna make sure we're getting the most bang for our buck. Here's three, two, one, and then just like we did before, ring comes out in front of us and we're giving ourselves those little squeezes to strengthen into the chest and start to do a little bit of work into that belly. Now how we stand upright is important. We're not just passively standing. We already talked about what the upper body's doing, but the lower body is important as well. We're really pressing those feet firmly into the earth, almost like we, as though we could rip that mat between our feet in half. So we're drawing thighs energetically apart, we're hugging belly button in. That nice staccato breath, please. Here's two, here's one, and then last time for those squats with that little tricep kickback, 
Maybe you're squeezing that ring a little bit harder, but only if you didn't compensate by lifting the shoulders up. If those shoulders lifted, then of course you wanna go a little easier on the squeezing of that ring. You got it. Are you sinking that booty back behind you? as though you're trying to sit into an imaginary chair that's one inch further behind you. There you go. Here's four, three, two, one. Last time for those chest squeezes. Now I want every part of your body here to be firm and anchored. The neck is long, you have a nice proud posture here. We're strengthening that chest. There's a little micro bend in the elbows just so that we don't hyper extend them. So it's almost invisible. And we have those nice staccato exhales for four, three, two, and one. Fantastic. We're gonna make our way down onto our mats next. So we're gonna come onto our back, take that ring with you, of course. We're using this ring all day long today. And we're going to come into a bent knee position and kind of wedge that ring between the thighs. If you're using uh, one of the more flexible, kind of lighter rings like I am, this may almost be a little bit more challenging to get the ring to stay. Um, good news, bad news, it's a little bit less muscular work if you have one of the more flexible rings, um, but it's a little bit harder to keep in place. So, um, all good, whatever you got, we're gonna work with that. We are gonna squeeze those knees until they are as close to hip width as possible. Now, depending on the strength or size of that Pilates ring, that may be easier than, than not, uh, but we are going to try to get those knees to about hip width distance apart up in that bridge pose. So we're kind of healing up. And then it's gonna be three little squeezes, again with that staccato exhale. <laughs> Hips come back down to the earth and we'll take that again. So inhale as you go down, exhale as you come up, grab a quick sip of air and then Let's do that again. Now it's your choice if you don't wanna take your hips all the way down to the ground, that of course is gonna increase a little bit more of the sensation that you're feeling so you'd get a little bit more burn along the quads, I'm sorry, not the quads, the hamstrings, the um, low back and the booty is what we're working on now. Those quads are what we worked earlier with that thigh stretch. And then if you needed, a little extra something something, then rather than having both knees squeezing in towards that ring with both feet on the ground, what if you extended one leg diagonal? So knees are still parallel, but one leg is just stretching towards the opposite wall. And then give me three little squeezes into that long leg. Oh my goodness, so did that make a difference? And then we would set those hips back down, either halfway or all the way. And then just the next time we would do it with the other leg. Now that's just an option. It definitely changes the experience for you, whether it's better or worse, that is completely your call to make. Now, if you are extending one leg, just make sure for me, please, that that hip doesn't dip lower than the other one. If so, then we just want it to kind of firm up in the belly button, see if that helps. And if not, then no worries. Maybe you just want to stick with both feet on the ground until we build up that strength to go a tad bit deeper. So in Pilates, we have a big emphasis on our pelvic stability, meaning that we learn how to keep the hips still when we are moving those legs around. And that really is coming from the powerhouse of the, the core. You got it. Finishing up our, up our last one. So if you are doing one side, make sure you do the other. You're balanced on both sides. And then let's come all the way down onto the ground. Fantastic. We are going to take that ring and now rather than having it in between the legs, we're gonna take our legs through it. So we're kind of nestling the pads of that ring just above the ankle bone. So just kind of the outside of the calves. Of course, we need to now kind of separate the feet a little bit to keep it from slipping. We're starting in a tabletop position, but I want you to watch me closely. I want you to pull your belly button in and lower the arch of your spine down onto the mat. 
so that you feel the abdominals kick in. We want to keep this little arch underneath us glued to the mat this whole time because we will be extending the legs, which could strain the back if we allow it to arch. So no arch in the back for this one. We're going to extend the legs out on a diagonal. Give me three little presses outward of that against the ring and then pull it back only until the knees are right above the hips. This is our bend and stretch. So we inhale as we pull the knees in, exhale, send them back out. Quick sip of air and then let's do three little squeezes. Out, out, out. Technically, I guess it's called a press. If you're going in the outside direction, we'd call that a press rather than a squeeze. Good. Now maybe you up the ante, maybe the next time that the legs come out, it's six little squeezes. So a little bit more engagement of that tummy. Remember, if you feel the back starting to arch, you want to kind of try to press it back down onto the ground. If that's not quite working, you could lift the legs a touch higher on that diagonal and that can help as well. Belly's working hard here. And then if you thought it would be fun to feel your abdominals a little bit more and only if that back can stay glued down onto the mat, maybe we turn this into a lower and lift. So maybe we keep the legs long, reach them up above the hips, and then lower them down to that diagonal. We do not need to go past 45 degrees. Number one priority here is to keep that back really pressing down every single vertebra into the mat so that we're working into our abdominals rather than straining the back. Again, maybe six little presses outward this time. And if this is not feeling good to your back, of course you can return to that bend and stretch where we bent the knees into that 90 degree tabletop. Let's find a couple more, utilizing that deep breath, especially as we take those little presses outward. You got it. <laughs> and then let's just go ahead and unthread our legs from that. Ah, and take a moment. All right, we are moving into our Pilates roll-up. So I want you to choose what works best for you based on your leg length, which might sound kind of funny, but it makes a big difference and you'll know right away which one is easier versus which one is harder. So if you are a little bit on the longer legged side, then working up to your Pilates roll-up may actually feel nicer to take one leg through. So I'm gonna demonstrate one time without the ring, which works a little bit better for us shorter leg gals. So the goal here is to go nice and slow, but just experiment with me. See if it feels a little bit nicer to take one leg through, just pressing it into that padded portion. And then sometimes if your legs are on the longer side, that can actually help you as you're learning your Pilates roll up, come up. It's just all about kind of counterbalancing. For me, I don't really do very well with that because I have shorter legs. So if it's actually a little bit easier for you, I really want you to focus today on the form and on reducing the momentum of your roll up. We want this to be super slow motion, just like we were watching this on like a slow-mo version but that's just gonna be us. That's gonna be how slow we are. Powerful exhale as you come up. Good. And then let's roll all the way back down. We're at our midway point, but whether or not you had your foot through the ring, I want you to go ahead and take your right foot through it now. We're gonna take a little hamstring stretch. Yes, yes, yes. Just kind of bending into the elbows. That should feel nice. Fantastic, now we're gonna repeat. So if you had the other foot for the full roll up in the ring, go ahead and continue. If you had no feet in the ring, then we're just gonna continue doing what we were doing before. Nice and slow, it's a C curve of the spine. We should feel no strain in the low back as you lean back. If you're feeling a strain, then we wanted to kind of segment that spine, scooping the belly in. Slow, 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 resist that urge to flail up. We wanna to try to glue those feet onto the mat if both feet are down. If only one foot is down, of course, we're gluing that heel down onto the earth, seeing if we can keep that heel cemented down towards the mat. Let's do one more, please. And then we'll all meet no rush with the left foot through the ring, giving it a little stretch.
good. And then from here, we're gonna take the uh, right arm out to the side and just pull that leg over to the left into holding the ring with the left hand. Nice little hip opener here. Trying to keep both hips on the ground. And then handing that ring off to the other side, the leg crosses the midline of the body, taking it across for a little IT bend stretch. The straighter you take your leg, the more you're probably gonna feel this. Whether or not that's a good thing is up to you. We'll take it back towards the center and then just one more time so we can get that cross body stretch on the right side. We'll take the right foot through the ring, reach it over to the side, both shoulders stay on the ground. And let's now reach it across the body, handing that ring off to the other hand. All IT down stretch. Coming back to the midline, and let's come up to seated. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this beginner Pilates workout. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet to make sure and never miss a new workout. Also, if you liked this video, if you would give it a thumbs up, that would mean the world to me. That's your way of saying thank you to me. Now, everyone knows that Exercise in and of itself is not the only element to living a healthy lifestyle. So if you're looking for a really practical, convenient way to complement your active lifestyle with healthy meal choices, then I invite you to stick around to learn a little bit more about my meal planning mastery program. I'm loving the fact that I can offer you these workouts free of charge. And when you invest in one of my premium programs like the meal planning mastery, it helps me to continue to be able to provide these. Take a look.